fasting this week uh, I know some are doing two and three days I really feel like God's going to give us some breakthroughs this conference Wednesday, Thursday and Friday I really some years I'm concerned about the crowd I'm always concerned about the crowd because this building's not big enough but I I have pushed all of that aside because I believe that God wants to do some special things in this conference this year. And uh, uh, so we need some people that will fast with us as much as you can. Um, if you would fast at least Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or some of you have the strength to do it, do it all three days because I believe that this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. That's right, amen. Praise God. If you would just commit, you don't have to tell us what you're going to do, but if you commit to praying and fasting with us, would you raise your hands and, and show that? Praise God. Thank you. There are specific things that I want to pray for. I want to break through in our Spanish speaking I want to break through I want to see people get in the Holy Ghost and uh, I want to see men our Spanish brothers receiving the Holy Ghost I want God to open the womb of this church. We, we had one I know that got the Holy Ghost this morning. I think we're supposed to baptize one tonight in Jesus' name. We baptized another one earlier this week and I love to see the waters of baptism stir. You know, some people they feel like we've had a great service when we shout the preacher out well if you want to shout the preacher out that's fine I'm not preaching tonight anyway so it's not going to bother me <clears throat> but to me that's not how I feel like I feel like we've had good service now we want to shout we want to worship I don't want to give you the wrong impression in fact I'm getting worried about some of you I think you're getting so old that you just kind of stand there and it's really worrying me I'm going to have to get you some vitamins or something Praise God. But uh, we're, we're going to worship God. We're going to do all of that. But I'll tell you, uh, when I consider it a good church service is when bondages are broken. And people leave here with victory. And demons are cast out. And people are baptized in Jesus' name. And people receive the Holy Ghost. That's victorious church. I love all of the rest of that and we're going to praise and we're going to worship and we're going to do all of that. But all of that brings us to the point of deliverance and healing and, and freedom. Praise God. And so let's be praying for that this week. 
I know that right now is our time for prayer. And if you are sick in your body, uh, I'm going to ask that everybody move back just a little bit. We'll, we'll come back in here. And if you need healing for your body, we want you to come right now. We want you to obey the word of the Lord. And our elders will come. Our elders will spread out here so that we have uh, men of God, ladies of God that can pray with you immediately and address the needs. You know, I feel like saying this in the Holy Ghost. Elders, instead of just praying for them, ask them what they need. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And let's find out what they need and let's pray specifically for that need. Can we do that right now? God, in the name of Jesus, help us out, elders. In the name of Jesus, we believe you. Right now, church, will you stretch your hands forward and let's pray. Let's fill this house with our prayer right now in the name of Jesus. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. We believe you for it in the name of Jesus. We ask you that your healing virtue would come down in this place. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You said if we would ask that you would answer. You said if we would knock, you would open. You said in your word that if we would obey your word and call for the elders of the church, that forgiveness would take place and healing would take place. Now we believe you for it. And we put a down payment of praise on it right now. And we thank you because you are God. And you're able to do this. Hallelujah. 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 I have one. Two more needs that we need to address. Brother Mockerman is in the hospital. He has blood clots in his lungs. Let's pray that God will heal him. And then I'm asking for Sister Salazar to step forward here. My dear sister lost her mother last week and she was not even able to, to attend the funeral of her own mother. And I want God to come and comfort Sister Salazar. I want some ladies that love this sister that you would come and you would pray with her. And let's ask for the peace, the strength, and the comfort of the Holy Ghost to minister to our sister right now. The rest of you, would you raise your hands and let's pray right now for this family. In the name of Jesus, we believe you for it right now, God. presence of the Lord here. There's no one that can comfort like the Holy Ghost can comfort. Can we just lift our hands and worship Him right now? Can we just lift our hands? There's a sweet presence of the Lord that's in. I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. When we rally together, there is power. How good and pleasant it is for brethren and sisters to dwell together in unity. It is like the anointing oil, and I feel that anointing here. Come on, let's praise him right now. Everybody, let's praise him. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We adore you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Let's continue to lift his name up tonight. Let's continue to worship him, Jesus. Praises be a fragrant invitation. We 
in this place. Amen. We have just a few announcements. First announcement is please remember there's a work day tomorrow. If you raised your hand to be there, please, please be there to help Sister Mariana, Sister Juana get through everything that needs to be cleaned tomorrow at the Donna Cordoba Center. There are more names than we could mention right now that have put a lot of time and effort and energy into making sure this gym is ready from our hearts, from my heart. Thank you so much for every single man and woman, young man, young woman that put in time, that put in energy and labor into the Donna Cordova Center and bringing this back from a train wreck to completely remodeled in just a little over a month. Thank you so much, every single one of you, for doing that. That is where the workday will begin tomorrow. That's where it will be, not begin. That's where it will be. It will be at 11 a.m. So if you raised your hand and committed to be there, please be there for that at, the, at 20, 1121 Beaumont Avenue at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Tuesday evening, there is no service here church has not been canceled church has been extended from one service to three evening services so there will be no church service here tuesday evening it will be wednesday thursday and friday evening of this week at 7 p.m because of passing the torch that first service will kick off wednesday evening at 7 p.m then there will be a service thursday morning at 11 a.m there will be another service Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Following the Thursday evening service, there will be the family afterburner event. I have it from a very top secret and credible source that tickets are selling quickly. Comes from one of the gentlemen who's selling the tickets. There are only 50 tickets left. Now you may say, well, that's plenty of tickets. You'd be surprised how fast 50 tickets will disappear Wednesday night when everybody gets in town and realizes I need to buy those tickets. So there are 50 tickets remaining for that event. If you want to buy them, you can go to cgcpueblo.org or you can go to the Christian Growth Center app, make your way to the Passing the Torch logo at the top, click on it. In that section, you'll see a, uh, one of the things you will see. It says Afterburner Event. You can prepay for your ticket and RSVP that way or... Wednesday evening of this week, Thursday morning, and Thursday evening, the e Thursday evening before the service, you can purchase that ticket there. Now, once the tickets are gone, they're gone. So there's 50 left. It's going to be a wonderful time. That ticket includes a buffet, all you can eat barbecue buffet. It includes pup up golf. It includes a game room for the next 30 that purchase theirs. And then once you get there, you can buy into other things. You can get into an escape room for a few extra dollars. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you all of the wonderful things. Just go to the cgcpueblo.org or the app. It'll give you a whole breakdown of everything that's going on. I believe the Lord is trying to get a hold of us right now. 
<laughs> Jesus, speak to us. <clears throat> that was him. Okay, Mitch, move on. Um, and then, so Tuesday, no service. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, is past the torch. Next Sunday, there is one service at 11 a.m. There will be Sunday school at 930, and there will be one service at 11 a.m. A.M. You do not want to miss it. Pastor Jeremy Wilbanks will be with us for that service. This has kind of become a tradition and a tradition that I like. If you have if you have not had a chance to get around Pastor Jeremy Wilbanks, you need to put it on your calendar right now to be in those services and to connect with this great man of God. You would not know it because he is a very humble man, but he is a premier scholar not just in Pentecost, but in the United States right now. He is putting in the time and the diligence to study the Word of God, and it always shows in his preaching. So, all the announcements out of the way except for one. During passing the torch, Sister Mediana is still looking for some people that can help her clean throughout the conference. I do not know what all she needs, so if you haven't signed up to help, this is not the church conference. This is our conference. This is Christian Growth Center's conference. So make your way to Sister Mediana after the service and just say, hey, Sister Madi, what can I sign up for? How can I help you? It's not going to take that long. It's going to be something like emptying the trash before or after service or just making sure one of the restrooms is clean. We're not going to ask you to clean the whole church by yourself. Trust me. It's broken down. Sister Madi has put this into a science at this point. So when service is over, touch base with her, sign up, and most importantly, let's do what Bishop already asked us to do. Let's fast and pray and watch God shake this city this week. Amen. Why don't you get out in the aisle? Why don't you find somebody that you haven't talked to yet? Shake their hand, hug their neck. Let's greet each other, welcome each other to Sunday Night Live.
making our way back to our seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Clap our hands. We serve a good God who's worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let's go ahead and put up our scripture for our tithe and offering this evening. Just want to echo what Brother Mitchell said. Thank you to everyone who has helped and labored. And some of us were there very late last night. And uh, if you haven't seen it yet, the Donna Cordova Center looks amazing. It's really coming together. Amen. Um, Brother Salazar, Brother James Salas, Brother James Fowler, Brother Reed, and several other gentlemen, Brother Jordan Pound, Brother Bob Scheid. Uh, God has really given Christian Growth Center some incredible men. Amen. Incredible men. And uh, thank you all so much. We were coming right down to the wire, but I think we're going to make it in Jesus' name. Let's read together. But the land with you go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Amen. Let's bring it cheerfully this evening. Oh, 
from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. He's a great God. He is a great God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm just feeling a wonderful move of the Holy Ghost here. And I kind of wish now I'd have told you to just get Brie ready. We just, I like to baptize somebody right in the middle of worship service. Hallelujah. Because I think the angels are rejoicing, but they can't rejoice like we can rejoice. The Bible says the angels look into this. They wonder about this because we have been redeemed. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is a, this a, this a big deal, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I didn't think of it in time. I have not had a donut today. Proud of myself, kind of. The problem is I had two yesterday. And I wanted two more, but I withstood the temptation. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so thrilled that God has given us the ministry that he has given us in this church. How many of you thank God for the ministry that he has given us in this church? And uh, all of the ministry, I was talking with somebody today that said they heard Sister Melody's message last Tuesday night and was so blessed by it. And then somebody was talking about double portion. If you don't know what that is, that's a podcast that uh, we put on here out of this church. Uh, Brother Mitchell, Brother Jeffrey Elder, who is our pastor in our our uh, sister work in Greeley, and then myself and Brother Jordan Pound, who is our able engineer, and we talk about all kinds of stuff. We're, we're starting a whole series on separation tomorrow night because I, I just love this message of separation. I don't know why people are having a problem with it. It's just it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. I'm going to tell you, when I come out of the world, I was sick of the world. I don't know what in the world people are wanting to go back to what God set me free from. I can't figure it out. I don't want to figure it out. I just want to stay. I just want to stay in love with Jesus and his ways. Amen. Praise God. But if, you know, all of that stuff. And then we have great ministry. Brother Reed preached Friday night. It was a powerful message at our youth service. Uh, just I'm so grateful to God that he's given us the ministry that he's given us in this church. One of those is my son, Brother Mitchell, and he, I just love the way that he has applied himself in his life to this, and we want him to come tonight, and we want him to deliver his heart. How many of you are going to get with the, the man of God as he preaches what God has put on his heart? If you're going to do that, why don't you give God a high praise as he comes to minister the word of the Lord right now. I apologize for this. Brother Amos uh, gave us the information on his son uh, that will be Saturday, October the 7th at the Romero Family Funeral Home on 4750 Tejon Drive. Uh, the memorial services from 11 till noon. If you are want to support Brother Amos in that, please see Brother Amos, and he can tell you where to be in uh, uh, in contact on how to get there. How many of you continue to pray for Brother Amos as he as he goes through this season in his life, and uh, we continue to support you, Brother Amos, and we continue to pray for you. Let's give God a high praise as Brother Mitchell Elder comes to preach the word of the Lord.
two minutes. You guys trying to tell me something? We could open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. thankful to be a part of Christian Growth Center. We have, there's uh, aspects of this church, there's ministries in this church that you see a lot more than there are ministries in this church that you don't see as much of. One of them we mentioned, and that is all of the men and women that have been putting in hard work at the gymnasium. And when we walk in there, we're not going to see, unless we were a part of it, we're not going to necessarily see the hard work. We're just going to see the fruit of that. And then there's others that we do see a lot. The music. Brother Richard, I know I say this often, but Brother Richard Montez does an excellent job with the music at Christian Rosa. An exceptional job. <laughs> But he doesn't do it alone. Brother Isaac and Brother David and Brother Jonathan and others that step in from time to time. Sister Melody, Sister Carly. And then there's the media team. Now, I heard one message say that the media team was building their own kingdom up there. But I don't believe that. Not this media team anyway. <laughs> Brother Pound and his team. And then there's the sound team. And there's the ushers and the greeters. And there's Sunday school and there's Spanish. I'm so glad to be a part of a church that's doing something. Now there's hope. If you're not connected to any of those, here's the hook. If you're not connected to any of those ministries yet, why not? Get involved. Get involved. You can shake someone's hand and smile and greet them at the front door. Or you can help take up the offering or... You can try to keep up with the bishop as he goes through scriptures as fast as he possibly can. Good thing, Brother Reed, we had a professional up there this morning. <laughs> but I'm glad to be a part of this church. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 10. not even going to read the full verse just the first three words <clears throat> Jesus makes this statement in teaching his disciples and those there to pray he says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come title I give us for the sake of remembrance tonight is that thy kingdom come don't know how long we'll go tonight don't know if we'll go high or low just have some things that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with us about that statement thy kingdom come why don't we pray church Jesus we love you thank you for your word God thank you so much for your word it's anointed, it's certified, God. Let this seed be planted in our hearts tonight. Let it grow in the end of this year, God, and let it bear fruit. All of 2024 and the rest of our lives, God, let this word bear fruit. Anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our minds to understand. Anoint our hearts to receive. Anoint our hands and our feet to go out and obey your word, Jesus. And everyone said, in Jesus' name, you may be seated. Matthew chapter number 6 is right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And it's actually interesting here. Um, this gives me hope because <laughs> the disciples missed this, apparently. Because 
This is Jesus teaching on prayer, and he gives us the Lord's Prayer. And then later on, the disciples ask him, teach us to pray. And he has to repeat himself. He says the same thing. So that gives me hope that for all the times that I've heard Bishop and others preach something, and then I go to them and ask the question, and they just have to repeat themselves. But Jesus is teaching on many things. He teaches on temptation. He teaches on divorce. Uh, he teaches on oaths. He teaches on forgiveness. He teaches on loving one's enemy. Not loving one's friend. Loving one's enemy. He teaches on giving. And then he teaches on prayer. He teaches on fasting. And many other things in Matthew 4, 5, 6, and really the whole book, but in his sermon on the mount. And in Matthew chapter 6, he, as already stated, he is teaching on prayer. And he gives us what we call the Lord's Prayer. And... Um, some people in Christendom as a whole believe that you should literally pray this prayer. Others believe that this is a pattern of prayer. Um, I think the correct answer is both. You can literally pray this prayer. But it is also a model of how to pray and how to live our lives. And so our text tonight and the entire focal point of this sermon, Thy Kingdom Come, is actually part two of this pattern of prayer. It begins... Verse 9, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in the original, in the heavens. Our Bible says in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I'm not necessarily here to teach or preach whatever this is on prayer tonight, but it is worth pointing out since we're already here. And I don't know the next time we'll be here in the Bible. I was trying to get back to Acts, Brother James, and I got really close. I have the notes on my desk. And I really felt impressed to go this way. And so this is where we're at. But in verse 9, the prayer starts out, Our Father, which art in heaven. So that says a whole lot right there. The first thing it says is he's our father. He's not your father or my father. He's our father. So he doesn't play favorites per se once you are born into the kingdom of God. He is our father. But it also says that we are a family. And we should get along as a family. When a family can't get along, you say that it is dysfunctional. God does not want a dysfunctional church. God wants a family that can get along. This is why we call each other brother and sister. Now, I don't know that you could say that that is a doctrine. Um, it's been a while since I dug into that in Scripture. But that is where that comes from. That's why you say, uh, you know. We would say, Brother Silas. What I'm saying is that is my brother, Silas. Or we would say, Sister Cast. What I'm saying is that is my sister, Sister Cast. She really loves when you call her Sister Cast. That's her name. So, you know, I just call her by her name, Sister, sister Cast. Just saying her name. Uh, it, it can also be a sign of respect to say... Brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. It's kind of like saying reverend or evangelist instead of, you know, we will have Brother Mark Dross with us. Well, it's, it's a sign of respect 
others. Pastor Miles Young. Um, it's, it's seen as disrespectful. It would be, in fact, some of you are going to cringe when I say this. But anybody would cringe if Bishop was pray, preaching and we said, Man, Paul, that was good preaching. See, you all cringed. <laughs> We're a family. And so that is why we call each other brother or sister, but we also do it as a sign of respect. And that needs to stay that way. Amen. It's not necessarily that it's a, a, a tradition that can't change. It's a tradition that doesn't need to change. To have respect for one another. I don't want to get so close to you. I want to be close to you, but I don't want to get so close to you that I can be disrespectful and not even realize it. So it's, it's brother or sister. And I understand that uh, some people grow up together and, and you get names of endearment. Like Uncle Fabe. I've always called him Uncle Fabe. Uh, Pastor Randy Williams. Uncle Randy. Uncle May, Santi Carla. I don't believe that names of endearment can be disrespectful. But remember, we are a family. Let's show that respect to one another. Our Father, which art in heaven. What does that mean, in the heavens? He's way over the problems that we are facing. He's bigger. He's more powerful than the problems we are facing. One word that I like is immense. God is immense. Immense, there is no boundary on it. He is Amen. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So first we remember we're a family. That he's our Father. And that he's in the heavens. And then we honor him. Hallowed be thy name. And then where we'll spend the rest of our time. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. This is the purpose of the church in the earth. Is to establish the kingdom of God. Now, and, and if you did not have a chance to hear it, I recommend that you go to Souls Harbor on YouTube and you listen to evangelist Cody Marks preach, Suck It Up Buttercup. Listen to the sermon. And he talked about at the beginning of that sermon the kingdom of God. And it's such a vast subject, the kingdom of God. Bishop hinted at this this morning when he quoted the verse. It says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It would not be an understatement to say that our entire Bible is about the kingdom of God. What else would it be about? And that's the purpose of this church, Christian Growth Center. It's not just the purpose of the church. It's the purpose of this church. Thy kingdom come. Now, some churches are there for network, networking and, and, and building your business and, and building your influence. You know, this is why a lot of people go to the biggest church in the city. It's not so much because God moves in that church. Now, some of the biggest churches in the city, God moves in that church. But some people go to the biggest church they can find for no reason connected to God at all. They just want to meet all the people in there and sell their product to those people. That's not the purpose of the church. That's not thy kingdom come. That's my kingdom come. That's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church. It is the end. In the good Samaritan story. It is so many things. In so many parables. But it is the driving force of God's kingdom. Being established in this dispensation, in this time period, in this earth. Thy kingdom.
come. And so, one of personally my favorite ways, I don't know if I should say that. I love all forms of preaching. But I find it very enjoyable to study expositionally. Usually we do it verse, verse by verse. Tonight, we're going to do it word by word to exposit. What is Jesus saying? We have to remember that Jesus only gave us so many words about prayer. God only gave us so many words in this prayer. So don't you think, now think about this question with me. Don't you think that God would make sure that every word matters that he's putting in that prayer? So let's look at this. Thy. What does that mean to us tonight? Thy, well, the first thing that means to me personally when I read it, it's him, not me. It doesn't say my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Jesus said, thy kingdom come. The first way Christian grows sinner the only way that we will ever truly begin, and, and I, maybe I should say continue because we have begun. The only way that we will continue to establish God's kingdom in this city is, it, is for that word to stay, thy kingdom come. There's a reason why I'm not yelling and screaming and jumping. and One, because I'm tired. <laughs> But deeper than that is because this doesn't need to be yelled and screamed. and This needs to be soaked in and obeyed. Because if you take the word thy and you go to the next phrase, you, you begin to understand even more how the kingdom comes. He says, thy kingdom come, God. How? Thy will be done. So if that phrase is my kingdom come and my will be done, then my kingdom will be established by fulfilling my will. But if we keep it the way that God put it, the way that it should be, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, his kingdom, Christian growth Center, will never come into full fruition in Pueblo, Colorado until His will is done. We can wish, we can pray, we can fast. None of those things should be stopped, should be discounted. Goodness, Bishop just talked to us in depth all day about the importance of fasting, real fasting. I was thinking when he talked about the Daniel's fast. You read that. It's, people are very specific about what a Daniel's fast is. And, and the book of Daniel is actually very vague about what he ate. So I'm, I don't know where they got their list. But <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> so we should pray every day. We should fast once a week. We should read our Bibles. We should wish. We should hope and dream. But we can wish and pray and fast all we want for the kingdom of God to be established. Until we get to doing His will, it will never be established. So it's thy... Remember, it's His kingdom. His kingdom come as we do His will. I'll give you an example. Jesus is praying in the garden of Gethsemane. And he prays, not my will, but thine be done. And then he goes and he finds the disciples asleep. There's a whole discourse between Jesus and Peter. And he goes back and he prays again. And paraphrasing, he says, if the only way... To fulfill your will, your purpose, your desire. If the only way is to bring the kingdom 
If the only way to bring the kingdom to earth is for me to drink this cup, thy will be done. And we know what he does, young men. He drinks the cup. And he goes to the cross. So you can will all you want. You can will all the good you want in this city, young men. You can will all the good you want into that high school, young lady. You can will all you want on that college campus. You can dream, you can wish, you can pray. But until you begin to actively do what God is telling you to do, His kingdom will not begin to be established in that place. This is why the prophet tells Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. We can come in here and we need to offer up the praise, the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. We're not saying that one should not be done and the other one should be. You have to do both. So we come in here and we have blowout church. Now y'all missed your chance to shout me out. You miss it. So maybe next Sunday. No, don't do next Sunday because that's Brother Wilbanks. So you're going to have to wait a few weeks. Sorry, you missed it. And don't do it in passing the torch because those are excellent preachers. (laughs) So you missed it for a while. We need to come in here and be loud and be boisterous and be exuberant. And, and show God in drastic and dramatic ways that we love Him. A sacrifice. We need to sacrifice. We need to sacrifice. But we also need to obey. So we can come down to this altar and we can pray and fast and plead and intercede. But if we don't get up and go do what God told us to do, His kingdom will not continue to be established in our lives. And we'll get frustrated and say, well, God, I, you spoke to me and, and this didn't happen. And why didn't this happen? Because we're not doing what God is telling us to do. He's saying, take this next step. Until we take that next step, He's not going to give us the next step. So it's thy. And then the part. (laughs) Where it gets. um, Gets a little bit more. Serious. Kingdom. Thy kingdom. This is a kingdom. This is a kingdom thing. We're doing a kingdom thing. We're not, we're not, this isn't a movement. This is a kingdom thing. This isn't just a movement. This isn't just a click. We already talked about it. This isn't a social networking thing. This isn't a, a building our influence thing. This is a kingdom thing. Why did Jesus use the word kingdom? Why? Well, we know it's the kingdom of God. It is a government. Isaiah says of the increase of his rule and government, there shall be no end. One of the reasons why I personally believe he used the word kingdom is because if you have a kingdom, you have a king. And we don't like too much to think about Jesus as our king. Now We like to sing about it. Todd Delaney wrote a beautiful song, King of Glory. And that is a beautiful song, and we sing it, and and the King of Glory fills the place. And you actually go read that psalm. Who is the King of Glory? It begins to talk about a, a king, a king, the King of Glory, who is strong and mighty and powerful. In battle. 
But to have a kingdom, you have to have a king. And if you have a king, then the king can tell you what to do. That's one of the powers of being a king. The king can tell you what to do. And if you don't do what the king tells you to do, the king has the right to remove you from his kingdom. So this kingdom of God, thy kingdom, come. This kingdom has a king, Christian Growth Center, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus gets to tell us what to do. Now, we live in a world that has lost its mind and they just, well, you're not going to tell me what to do. Okay. Then you're not going to be in his kingdom. That's just how it is. You can argue all you want. You're not, you, don't argue with me. Argue with him. He's the king. He sets the stipulations and the guidelines and the boundaries of his kingdom. I don't get to pick the guidelines of his kingdom, Silas. Brother Silas, excuse me. The Bible sets the guidelines for the Bible's kingdom. So when the man of God gets up here and he preaches about the guidelines of the Bible, I mean, we can get mad at him if, or her if we want. That's not really smart because all they're doing is preaching the word of God. So we can get mad or we can accept this is the stipulations of being a part of this kingdom. So the king can tell us what to do. The king can tell us things like women don't cut their hair. I don't get to decide that. The king gets to decide that. This is his kingdom. I don't get to pick that. The king gets to say things like, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and had them do all the work. That's not what he said. That's not what the king said. The king said, gentlemen, now this is convicting. This to me seems almost impossible to complete. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. How much did Christ love the church and gave himself for it? We always love the part where it says, wives, submit to your husbands. Whoa, yeah, amen. Guys run the aisle. The Hammond organ is turned on. Three people get the Holy Ghost. And they never get to the next part. Husbands, love your wives. Now, I don't understand all of this. But there's a reason why the Apostle Paul actually gets to this. In fact, in one place he says now, paraphrasing, he says now, I'm really not even talking about marriage. I'm talking about the mystery of Jesus and the church. So, we are the body. But we are also the bride. We are both. And we know this because... Adam had a bride that was taken from his body. And we are told that they were one flesh. I don't understand how all that connects yet. But that is there for a reason. And so, Jesus can tell us things like that. Why? Because he wants to tell us what to do? No. Because he set the boundaries of this kingdom. And we always get stuck there. We always get stuck at, well, the king is telling me what to do. But, watch this. For those that live in the kingdom of God, that have a king, and that king's name is Jesus, because he is the king of that kingdom, if you are a citizen of that kingdom and you are sick, he can also heal you. Why? Because he's your king. We want the healing side, but we don't want the side where he can tell us what to do. I believe there's an old song that said, if he's not Lord of everything, he's not Lord of anything. Bishop talks about a sermon that was preached a long time ago. That's, don't call him Lord or Master if he can't tell you no. So, 
So if we want the kingdom, which I believe we do, because, and, and I'm almost done. We're almost out of time here. The, the kingdom brings so many things to our lives. When you live in the kingdom, you live, on, you live in the blessing of that king. If we want to be the head and not the tail, if we want to be above only and not beneath, if we want to be the lender and not the borrower, we have to live in the kingdom that holds that blessing. And to be in that kingdom, you have to obey that king and his guidelines. So when that king says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay, I'm going to be holy. Why? Because I want to be in that kingdom. When the king says, do this. Okay, I'm going to do that. When he says, don't do this. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I want to be a part of that kingdom. And the only way I can stay in that kingdom is to obey what that king is saying to do. When I choose to disobey that king, eventually he will remove me from the kingdom. That's just how it is. We see this even in society. People refuse to live by the laws of this land long enough. What happens? They are removed from society. Sometimes for a season. Sometimes they're put to death. Not because we think that's a good idea. It has nothing to do with the law, with the, with the judge. It has nothing to do with the jury. Now it includes them. But it began because somebody just wouldn't live by the law of the land. If they would have lived by the law of the land, Brother Hicks, they would have never stood before that judge or jury. They would have never been sentenced to prison or to jail and removed from society for a season. They would have never been sentenced to death. But because they chose not to live by the law of the land, why would we think that the Bible would be any different? Why would we think that God's kingdom would be any different? In fact, God's kingdom is... More, it, it is, I don't want to say more drastic, but that's the word that's coming to mind right now. Because it is a theocracy or a monarchy. Now, I know that some people would like to think that there is a panel in heaven. But there is not a panel in heaven for discussion. There is one king. And his name is Jesus. And he and he alone decides... Whether I'm in the kingdom or I'm out of the kingdom and the rules of that kingdom. Why are we talking about this, Brother Mitchell? Why are you going so slow? Because I am on a quest to see the kingdom established in this city. I am on a quest to see God establish his kingdom in this city. Because, listen, and it's deeper than that. I'm just not on a quest for the kingdom. I want God to set his throne in this city. If there's, I pray this. You can say this is selfish all you want. It's not. It's not for me. It's for this city. But I pray this quite often. God, if there's one city in this nation where you set your throne, let it be right here. He said you have not because you ask not. Now, he also said you have not because you ask amiss. So if I'm asking amiss, he won't do it. But maybe he hasn't done that anywhere else because nobody's asking him. I want the kingdom here. Why? Because if the kingdom's here, the king's here. And if the king's here and I'm living according to the law of the land, I'm living according to the stipulation, then I can go before the king and I can ask of his good graces and he will give to me liberally. Why? Because I'm a citizen that's obedient. There's no reason why he should not give to me. This is why some people are just abundantly blessed. Because they've learned kingdom principles and they follow them. And this is why some people just seem like they can't get ahead. They can't get ahead. They can't get ahead. Why? Because they're trying to live in a kingdom and disobey all of the rules of that kingdom. Young people, quit fighting it. If you want to be a part of the kingdom, just do what the king's telling you to do. Don't fight it. Don't kick against it. Just say, okay, God, this don't make any sense. I'm just going to do it. It'll make sense eventually. Trust me. Now, if you don't want to be a part of the kingdom, then don't. We want you to be. But we can't make you, and God won't make you. And the longer that you live in this kingdom and just kick against it, 
the more miserable you're going to get. And then the last, he says, thy kingdom come. You see Jesus do things in the Bible that only make sense when you understand that he's the king. He goes into the temple and he drives everyone out. That's his temple. He's the king. And he even says it. My house. And they didn't get it. But he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Christian Grosser, we can't get mad at him. When Paul said this, and I didn't put it in my notes. I should have. I believe it's in 2 Corinthians. He said, no, ye not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Ye are not your own. You are bought with a price. So don't get mad at the king when you bring a bunch of junk in your life and then he kicks the door in and starts driving the junk out of your life. It's not your life. It's his life. Now, if you don't want to be a part of this kingdom and you don't want the blessing and the provision of this kingdom, then you won't have the king and he won't do that to you. But if you want the blessing of the kingdom and you want the protection of the kingdom and you want the provision of the kingdom, then you obey the laws of the kingdom. And when you bring junk into his house and he kicks the door in and says, get rid of that, don't get mad at him. It's his house. Would you let somebody set up shop in your living room and do whatever they want in your living room? Not in this state. (laughs) Maybe in some others now. (laughs) We live in an interesting nation. (laughs) Some states, somebody can move into your home and you can't even evict them. (laughs) Would you let somebody do that to your house? Would you let somebody just set up and do whatever they wanted right in front of your kids, right in front of your wife, right in front of your husband, do whatever they wanted to your pets? No. So why are you doing that to God's house? You are his house. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are not your own. That's why we don't cuss. That's why we don't drink. That's why we don't smoke. That's why we don't go carousing around. That's why we don't live in immoral lifestyles. That's why we don't get tattoos. That's why we don't get tattoos. That's why we live a certain way. That's why we dress a certain way. Why? Now, there's, there's scripture for all that. I'm not just saying things. But that's why we don't do those things. Yeah. That's right. Because you're not your own. Yeah. You're the king's. Right. He is your master. He is my master. He gets to tell me what to do. And that's why he could walk into that temple and braid a whip and start driving them out and kicking stuff and making a mess. That was his house. He can do the same in mine. But it's it's powerful what he does. Because he cleans the house. And he brings the house back to its original intent, Brother Silas. And people begin to be healed in that house. Don't get mad when God's driving things out of your life. Because when he gets it all cleaned up, the next thing that comes is healing. And restoration. There's broken parts of our lives. And we're still stuck on fighting God like, well, you can't get rid of that. Well, then he can't heal that part of your life. You cannot have God as a healer without God as a master. You can't do it. You can't have the kingdom without the king. And then the last part. Thy kingdom come. That word, one of its, I guess, one of the ways that we would better understand it in English is it's appearing or it's manifestation. Thy kingdom be established in earth. And we're not even going to get to that tonight. In earth. As it is in the heavens. That's why you have to pray. 
Because you'll never see what your life is supposed to be like until you pray. You'll never see the pattern. You'll never see the blueprint. You'll never see the order. You'll never understand that God wants me to do thus and thus at such a date because you never asked him. That's like sometimes men when your wife expects you to read their mind. And you're just like, I can't read your mind. I'll try. But I can't read your mind. But they want you to. <laughs> you can't read God's mind. You got to talk to him. You got to talk to him, young men. If you're ever going to know what you're supposed to do past graduation, you got to talk to him. If you're ever going to understand what you're supposed to do in college, young lady, you got to talk to him. Don't just get a degree. That's a waste of money. I'm not telling you not to get a degree, but don't just get a degree. Go talk to God. Go talk to the king and say, okay, King Jesus, what do you want me to do? What would you have me do in this kingdom? And he's going to tell you what he would have you do in the kingdom. And then you go get a degree that will help you do what he needs you to do in the kingdom. Otherwise, you end up with like a chemical engineering degree. And then you'll be doing something that has nothing to do with chemical engineering. Now, if you already got a degree and you're not using it, I don't know, maybe go back and ask him how you can use it. One of the greatest Bible study teachers in all of Pentecost had, has a chemical engineering degree. And he never used it. But he also wasn't saved when he was getting it. He got saved while he was getting it. But young people, don't just go to college. Don't, don't just talk to, I mean, you know, if he's cute, talk to him. But if he's a dummy, drop him. Don't worry about his feelings. He'll get over it. If he's being dumb, tell him. Peace, homie. <laughs> Same thing, young man. If she's being dumb, there's, look, listen. There's a... A million other people in the apostolic world, guys and girls, that you can talk to. If you're a guy and you're talking to a young lady and she's being dumb, don't talk to her. Don't waste your time. Young lady, don't waste your time. There's a better guy out there. So you better be the better guy, young man. Don't get mad at her if she dumps you. Get your act together. But ask the king. All right, king. Is this person in your kingdom worth me spending forever with? Ask him. He'll tell you. Just ask him. Talk to the king. And then the establishment of the kingdom. And this is where we really really should have got here first thy kingdom come and his kingdom comes when his will is done if I could say it as simply as I could put it I would put it in, in, the, in the simplest layman's terms that I could I would say pray Act, repeat. Pray, act, and repeat that. It's like when, when we built this church, Bishop, countless times. Now, I was really too young to understand what they were doing. I mean, I understood what they were doing, but I didn't understand how to do it. Countless times you would watch the men building Go to the blueprint, take a tape measure, measure it all out, figure out what they were supposed to do to the blueprint, according to the blueprint, and then they would go back and they would do that thing. Most of the time we did it according to the blueprint. <laughs> and then we would go back to the blueprint. They would. I would just tell them I was the gopher. Go for the tape measure, 
go for the hammer, go for the saw. That's, that was my job. Go for the pencil. Hold this. But they would go back to the blueprint. That's how we're going to establish the kingdom of God in our lives, church. That's how we're going to do it personally. And that's how we're going to do it corporately. To go to the blueprints. To go to the map. To go to the guide. The Bible. And to open it in prayer and say, okay, God. Thy kingdom come. Let it be established. And he's going to say, okay. This part is going to be established when you get up and go do this. Get up and go do that. Even if it's as simple as him telling you, I want you to get up and pray 15 minutes a day. Then do that. And do it until you're doing it to the best of your ability. And then go back. And it's in this ebb and flow of going to God and saying, what do you want me to do? And then doing it. And then going back to God and saying, God, what do you want me to do? And doing it. It's in that church that if we begin to do that correctly, every day, not not just on Sunday, not just on Tuesday, not just for those of us that come to Monday night, and maybe it would be a good step to just start coming on Monday night to talk to the king. On Monday night. He's here on Monday night. Some of you missed that because you're not here. But he is here on Monday nights. He's here. Come talk to him. But not just Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Goodness, if you're in Bible quizzing and, and Bible study with Brother Pound, you get Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You service Friday. It's impossible to sin if you keep that schedule. Amen. Are really hard. <laughs> Outreach on Saturday, or music practice, or whatever's going on, work day. But not just at church service, but every day, every day, God, thy. So, first of all, this isn't mine. I like what you say, Brother Hicks. None of this is mine. Thy, this is yours, God. Thy kingdom. So, so this is a family, and this is a kingdom. And because there's a kingdom, there's a king. And there's rules to stay in the kingdom. So thy kingdom come today. Today, God, thy kingdom come this morning before I do anything else. Thy kingdom be established. If we begin to do that, one, you'll begin to see the king show up more and more because your life will begin to reflect his kingdom more and more. But also you'll begin to see in this city, the kingdom will begin to be established in this city. And the more that the kingdom is established in the city, the more that the king will show up. And the more the king shows up, yeah, there'll be times Christian Growth Center, and he's going to kick the door in, and he's going to say, get rid of this. There'll be times. There's times where Jesus is going to braid a whip. And I think based on our obedience, we'll be, we can, can kind of control how many times he does that. But also, the more the king shows up, the more he's going to heal. The more he's going to save. The more he's going to deliver. The more he's going to set free. If I want my family to be set free, I don't need to shout the preacher out. I need thy kingdom come. If I, if I want the drug dealer to stop, if, if I want the broken marriage to, to just be mended, if, if I want the lame to walk, if I want the dumb to talk, I don't need good church. I need thy kingdom come. Now, good church is a part of that. But we all know this. And let's stand. I'm closing. I preach too long. We all know this, that there are times that we had blowout services, air quotes. For those of you that are listening later on, I'm doing air quotes. We had, quote, unquote, blowout church, and we left unchanged. 
Now, there's other times we have blowout church and we leave forever changed. And I, I think there's a balance there of allowing God to blow the service out and not allowing our emotions to just run away with us. When God does it, he changes us. But when we just get so excited that we just run away with ourselves, we don't leave changed. But there, there is a way that you can walk, saint of God. And you can walk that way every day. And you can walk that way every minute. And I believe that you can walk so much that way. That in this city, you're going to start walking down the street and your very shadow is going to bring healing. Because it wasn't Peter's kingdom. It was Peter every day saying, Jesus, thy kingdom come. And he was so close with God. This may make people uncomfortable and I don't believe in, I don't believe that you can become God. But I think there are a couple times in the Bible that Peter and Paul, you can point at them and they're, if they couldn't say what Jesus said, they're really close when Jesus said, I and my Father are one. In Acts chapter 5, and we're going to get there eventually, and we're going to preach about it as we work through the whole book of Acts, but there's a place there where the Bible says that the Apostle Peter's healing, and it says every single person was healed by Peter. Jesus was already in heaven. The Apostle Paul, Ephesus, many mighty works were done by the Apostle Paul to where he can look at a layman and say, get up and walk. The Apostle Paul did that too. It wasn't just Peter and John. The Apostle Paul did that. You can do that. Saint of God. But we got to get this. When we get this, we'll do that. Thy kingdom come. These altars are open tonight if you want to come and talk to the king. just talk to this King Christian Grove Center. Get up tomorrow and talk to the King. And don't just talk to Him. Say, okay, God, what's the next step? What's the next step, God? Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay, God, I did, I did, I did step one. What's step two, God? Okay, Jesus, I did step two. What's step three, Jesus? How? You want your family saved? Begin to ask him how to do it. Don't just ask him to do it. Ask him, God, how can I help you do it, Jesus? What's the... Oh. What can I text them, God? What can I... When, when's the right time to pick up the phone and call him, God, and say, I'm still praying for you. I'm still fasting for you. Thy kingdom come, God. Thy kingdom come, God. Come on, young men. God wants you to own your own business. And God wants to bless that business so far beyond what you understand. But you got to start praying the right thing. Thy kingdom come, God. God will bless your business. God will bless it beyond what you what you understand. But you got to understand this: it's 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 His kingdom. This this kingdom, this business is operating in the currency and in the marketplace of the King. And that that business will never 
It will never flourish until you understand how to operate in the marketplace of the king. The only way you'll get that is talk to the king. Come on, young lady, you're not going to college just to do it. God, the king put you in that college. The, the king put you in that college just like he put Moses in the house of Pharaoh to learn from the Pharaoh's instructors and educators and to learn the things that he could only learn in Pharaoh's house. You're in that college class for a reason, young lady. You're in that high school for a reason. The king has you there for a reason. But you got to pray, thy kingdom come, God. Thy kingdom come, God, and thy will be done. Come on, saying to God, you're not just going to go to work tomorrow. You're going to work with the king. Ask him, God, why am I here? Why am I in this job, God? What's the next step, Jesus? Who am I supposed to witness to in this place, God? Who am I supposed to be praying for in this place, God? Thy kingdom come. you church as we begin to obey the king the armies of the king will back you up if you want the protection of the king talk to him obey him and he'll back you up every step of the way thy kingdom come God thy kingdom come God thy kingdom come Jesus Establish your kingdom in my mind, God. Thy kingdom come in my home. Thy kingdom come in my family. Thy kingdom come on my job, God. Thy kingdom come on my business. Thy kingdom come in this church, God. Thy kingdom come in this city. Thy kingdom come in our cars, God. Thy kingdom come, God, in everything we do. And everywhere we go and everything we touch, God, thy kingdom come. Every place that we put the sole of our feet, God, thy kingdom come. Every relationship, come on, God's not connecting you with that person just for you to be buddies. He's trying to establish part of the kingdom. But how's he going to do it? You're never going to know until you ask him. God connected you with that business God connected you with that family God connected you with that influential person in this city because he wants to establish his kingdom thy kingdom come come on church pray find the will of God do it and then go back to praying pray until you find the will of God do it and then go back to praying
Let's lift our hands and let's thank God for this baptism tonight. Hallelujah. The angels of God are rejoicing over this. Praise God. Sister Brielle got the Holy Ghost in February, and she's been asking us to baptize her, which we needed to. So tonight we're going to baptize her in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins. Elise. Sister Brielle Elise Condor, upon the confession of your faith and your obedience, to the voice of God and his word. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Give him a high praise. Come on, let's give him a high praise. It's a big deal when somebody's baptized in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is one of the main parts of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's give him a high praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I never get tired of baptizing the children in this church. You notice I don't baptize too many people because we have qualified people that can baptize them. In fact, you're qualified to baptize. Jesus said, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel and baptize them. If you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. But I love, there are three things that I love to do. I love to dedicate the babies of this church. And I love to baptize the children of this church. And then I like to marry them to somebody else, not me. Just as whacked out world as we live in, I just got to make sure you know that. Hey, if the word of the Lord spoke to you tonight, why don't you lift your hands and let's thank him for his kingdom. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you for the kingdom of God. Thank you, God. I want to be a part of your kingdom. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Now, the more I study this, the more I see how Tyndale and other translators struggled to bring this into the English language. And the more admiration I have for these people 
to try to keep the Word of God accurate. And what that literally means is that the kingdom of God is breaking into this world. How does it do that? Through you and I. As we become who God calls us to be, we take the kingdom of God to our job with us. We take the kingdom of God to our schools with us. We take the kingdom of God to Walmart with us. And it's breaking forth all over in this city. And you say, well, I just don't have any influence. Well, you do. You do. The devil is just lying to you. And you need to get the victory over that. And see that if you will be who God called you to be, you can affect your community. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Mitchell Elder, for that timely word. Next Sunday is a very special Sunday. Pastor Jeremy Wilbanks will be with us. This is a great man of God. But also, I I think that Chief, Pueblo Police Chief Noller, and I believe Stuart Bastion, who is the coordinator for all of the volunteer work of the police department, and perhaps a couple of the other officers will be with us because next Sunday is Sunday they call Faith and the Blue and we they've asked us to show our support and we're going to have the first part of the service you don't want to miss it, don't be late next Sunday we need you here praise God and uh, we are going to sing a very special song, I'm going to say a few words and then we're going to pray over the Officers that are represented here, we uphold the law. I know we're in Pueblo, which makes it more important for us to uphold the law. Praise God. I was on a call the other night about a law officer that lost their life. And, uh, there were people that were involved in that incident that were lawless and uh, I don't want to live my life and I think that's why God gave us a church like this is to bring people in that used to live that way and God will straighten their life out and they don't have to live that way any longer one of the greatest attributes to a community is a church because we're in the business of seeing God change lives amen <clears throat> praise God so that's going to be a very, very special time. And again, you know, listen, if you have Spanish friends, now I, he, may, he may preach in Spanish, I don't know. Brother Mark Dross is a, an incredible evangelist. There are many thousands of people that have uh, been saved by the ministry of this man. And we just give him the liberty to do whatever he wants to do. But I specifically felt in the Holy Ghost to use this man because of the dynamics of the battles that uh, he has won and been able to bring dominion in those areas. And then I feel like God has spoken to me about Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. And then Pastor Miles Young from Sacramento, California will be preaching Thursday night. Incredible man of God. Pastors a little home missions work out there in Sacramento. If you've been there, you know I'm being a little cheeky here. But and then Thursday morning, Brother Ron, our Brother James Townley. And this is an incredible man of God. And then Friday night, uh, Pastor Randy Williams from Fort Myers. And I believe that God's going to be doing great things. So if you're fasting, if you're let's be here tomorrow night for prayer. And all of you that promise that you would show up tomorrow at 11 o'clock to help us clean and set up the Donna Cordova Center we need some young men we got it okay all of you young men there's no school this week is there especially tomorrow there's never school on Monday we get some of you young men at 11 o'clock 
and young ladies help us out that's actually your gymnasium so help us put it together God bless you hey don't walk out of here and just walk by people as you walk out smile real big at your brother and your sister and greet them tell them how happy you are to be a part of this kingdom of God with them God bless you you're dismissed